I resigned as parliamentary secretary, left government to join the third party of the opposition, and I'm seeking the open nomination in Eglinton Lawrence, and if successful, we'll be taking on the current representative, Canada's finance minister. Whoa, hold on. You left government. You were parliamentary secretary. I mean, most people have that position in, in Ottawa politics. Anyway, E. Eve Adams, political genius. Uh, seriously, though, I mean, can we not do better than this? Will she win? Is she electable? Does her partner know where some Tory bodies are buried? I, our Rachel Siegel, uh, ooh, she's done some digging. She knows where all the bodies are. But, you know, I, I don't want to be mean, but th there's, there's a lack of honesty here. She says that she just couldn't be with the Tory party anymore. A f just a few weeks ago, she was mm -hmm. mouthing Tory party positions. We know the Tory party did not want her to be part of the caucus anymore. She wasn't right. going to get a seat. Exactly. So she had to move and she's moved to the Liberals. The whole thing stinks, doesn't it? Yeah, and uh, you know, we've seen that she has presented herself as leaving the party when in fact, when we look at what actually happened, uh, she, the, she was told that she would not be able to run in any riding across the country for the Conservatives. So instead, <laughs> exactly, she picked up and walked across the floor and said to Justin, I, I'm ready now. I'm ready to be on your team. Um, and so that's what we saw at the beginning of the week. And today we heard, uh, like she said in that clip, that she will be running against uh, Joe Oliver, our finance minister, in the riding of Eglinton Lawrence. Uh, when I first heard that, I thought, what an interesting pick. The former MP from there is a guy named Joe Volpe, uh, who is Italian. There's a large Italian community. Uh, in that riding, approximately 30%. Yeah. Uh, there's also 25% approximately of the riding is also Jewish, mm -hmm. which the finance minister is Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, Eve Adams, not really sure how she plays into that riding well, and any of the gen <laughs> demographics of the riding, um, but she, you know, wants a, a good fight, I, I suppose. Well, Joe, I mean, I haven't seen Joe in years, but a very savvy political operator. Yes. Has he not said that uh, she went to him and asked if he would handle the campaign and he said no? Uh, Joe Volpe, yes, yeah. exactly. Sorry, I thought you were talking about Joe Oliver. No, that's very doubtful. Yes, isn't it? exactly. So Joe Volpe, Joe Volpe. who is a he's very experienced uh, political yes. operative. She said, please handle the campaign, and, and he said, no. Right, and she also, there was also speculation that Joe Volpe's son might run in the riding, and she addressed that this morning also, uh, and on his, his behalf said, uh, no, he won't be running in the riding either. There is already a candidate running. He's a former Crown prosecutor uh, and a lawyer uh, for the Liberal nomination, and so this is not a contested, uncontested riding. The interesting thing to see, you know, the beginning of the week we saw Justin Trudeau, the leader of the party, next to Eve Adams. But if, what if she loses that nomination? It's a very risky move to have the leader of your party coming out and saying, I support this candidate, and then having that candidate lose the nomination. I don't know if he said that. I mean, I, I do understand his dilemma because if a Tory MP says, I want to be in your caucus, even for a few months, it's hard to say no. Mm -hmm. At the same time, he, he seems to have changed his policy or lessened his enthusiasm in the past 24 hours. I think he's realized now there's quite a lot going on. It's a big statement to have the leader of a party come out and hold a news conference about a potential nominee. That says a lot about yeah. whether or not they're supporting that candidate. Yeah, I, I suppose so. I, I watched the interview today. I, I, I was in that building, actually, when it was taking place mm. uh, on a, a radio station there. Mm -hmm. um, the way she sits, sort of her hands in a very yes, specific I position. That Did as you well. notice this? Yeah. And the whole demeanor. Um, again, I'm not being rude, but it seems manufactured. It seems unreal. She's not actually speaking to you, she's speaking at you, and the words have no meaning. Yeah, and I think that it felt, if I can call it so, uh, a little bit desperate, and you kind of saw that in her in her mannerisms this yeah. morning in that interview. I agree with you, that definitely stood out the way she was sitting on the edge of her, her chair, That should be a, a very bad finishing school. Right, yeah. yes, exactly, exactly. I thought, you know, her body language kind of talked about what showed how she's feeling towards the whole situation. You mm. know, this level of desperation, not being welcomed by the Conservatives. Mm. Now, you, like you say, Justin Trudeau yeah. pulling back a little bit. Now, um, her partner, her lover, I'm not sure what the, the, the appropriate political uh, fiance is what some be. people is it, is it Yes. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm not a Tory party person. I've never been involved with the Tory party. Mm -hmm. He used to do something for the party, he, for the Prime Minister. Yes, he was Director of Communications for the Prime Minister. Yeah, for how long? Uh, for a few years. And then he was Executive Director of the party for a few months. Right. So uh, uh, he is meant to know things that can damage the government? 
Well, I mean, I have absolutely no idea what Dimitri Sudas knows. Um, there is speculation that perhaps he does know things. Um, that said, this has, you know, been very interesting in that he was an effective director of communications for the prime minister. Uh, and I would speculate that the prime minister actually really did like him when he was in that role. Um, that said, this is kind of can we say a fall from grace you yeah. know his fiance uh, changing parties kind of looking a little bit desperate and him I would argue is potentially the mastermind behind everything that we've seen this week mastermind oh golly how they've fallen over the years <laughs> it look it's, it's ludicrous the, the, the conservatives have not changed their, their positions yep. are pretty much what they always were the idea that she wants a party of, of gender equality and, mm -hmm. and, and and social change Tory party is never going to Never going to touch the abortion issue. It is not interested in it. It's, it, it's immediately gone very hard on, on any MP who's, who's raised the issue. Yep. I don't think there's any ideological content here at all. It's about ambition. No, and I mean, she'll argue the opposite, obviously. But I think that what is so ludicrous in this situation right now is the news that we got today about Eglinton Lawrence mm -hmm. and, you know, taking on this fight against Canada's most powerful minister. I think, uh, you know, Joe Oliver's probably sitting back in his chair today thinking he's a very more accomplished about the budget. Man. He's a very sophisticated. Man exactly. with deep links to both the Jewish and Italian communities. Yes, I, and a I, fabulous finance minister. Yeah, I don't believe there's any way she can beat him at an election, and I think a lot of totally people agree. might might regret this. And um, I, I don't know, municipal uh, government uh, to well. Uh, yeah, federal antics. It's, uh, I said in the mod, like Canada deserves better than this. It, it, it really does. I agree. That was wonderful, as always. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. It was great. Yeah. <laughs>